much for joining us today for our panel discussion. We're going to be talking about the book, Because We Can Change the World. But before we get into that, please join us as we open in prayer. Let's take a breath together and give thanks. God, we are so grateful knowing that we can be the solution in every situation as we open ourselves to you and let you come through us. We see whatever it is around us being blessed, being transformed, and being changed. And we are so grateful. Thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. For our panel discussion today, we are very fortunate to have Kathy Cronin and Linda Baker with us. And I will start the topic. I showed you the book and we are going into chapter six, working together to learn. <clears throat> and I'm gonna jump right to the vision on this. A cooperative classroom is one in which all members work together to achieve mutual goals. These goals can include academic learning, social problem solving, and conflict resolution. The poster, none of us is as smart as all of us, embodies the essence of the co cooperative classroom the language and principle of cooperation, working together, shared goals, mutual support, and problem solving infuse every activity of the classroom. In order for teachers to work well <clears throat> with different groups of students, an atmosphere of cooperation is essential. Competition and competitive structures make diverse classrooms even more challenging. And that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> of course, the book is talking about a classroom, but we can apply that into the boardroom or even the family at supper. When we set up different competitions, what we're doing is we're making a loser out of somebody in the room. That's probably not our intention. We want people to strive to do the best and we want to reward the people who are the best. But every time we do that, we're creating that sense of competition, that sense that somebody is better than, so obviously somebody is lesser than. If instead we join together as a team, a group, a committee, and work together to come up with the best and strongest ideas, the best traditions, habits that serve absolutely everyone, then everyone involved is a winner. I personally absolutely love the vision on this that it's a we thing, not a you and a me thing. That when we join, we're not looking for somebody to blame or somebody to tag this onto. We're looking for solutions that will create the very best situation for each and every one of us. When we join together in a mission, in a vision, all of our minds together, all of our expressions make all of us better. Now, I realize, ladies, that you're not going to really disagree with that, but I'm hoping that you can share your own experience and strength on this topic. And thank you for being with us. Linda, I will share my thoughts on that. Um, you know, the uh, scriptures where two or more are joined together, therefore is Jesus. Well, I also believe that, you know, when the 12 disciples um, joined together and were in hiding when um, Jesus had died, and it's the Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came to them and enlightened them. I think that when people come together, 
for that enlightenment and sharing. And there's so much that can, you can move the mountains and that is so much can be done in unison by working together to find a solution. Um, and it is that cooperativeness. I think, like you said, when it starts to become competitiveness, like, well, this one can do that better than you can. And that the other part is, you know, like they always say, if you want to, if you want to stop something from happening, take it to committee. And, and I think part of that reason is that when you get to committees, it does become almost competitive or you've got the naysayers who always shoots the ideas down. And I think in the aspect of my experience is that when you get a group together to be, to hold the focus of it as saying like brainstorming, let's, every idea is good, throw them all out there. And then we, you know, what comes to the, like cream rising to the top? What are the key ones that, you know, everyone sort of says, hey, this is, but let every thought, even if it's so far-fetched where, you know, you truly sat in a brainstorming session, they throw anything and everything out and it all hits, it's all on the board. And then because all of a sudden somebody go, I never would have thought of that idea. And, and then it ends up being the solution or ends up being the creation. So um it's just being open and and to what the universe i said i always have this high you know this mass transit going on in the universe that's in my head and it's like thoughts are moving out there all the time so being open to everything and hearing everybody i think the other part is to hear people i think in that communication and making but it's to hear everyone and to validate them not make them feel like their ideas aren't good enough or you know, that was a silly idea or why would you want to do something like that is just hear them and to validate, like, thank you for sharing that. And um, it just didn't boost the whole energy in, in an individual, in the group and in, you know, what's happening around us. So, you know, there's points in times that we see um, something that changes. It's like, let's just throw every idea out there, throw it all out there. Let's put it in the center and and then we'll sort through what is feasible and what's the you know top priorities of this. But um, that's a lot of times with things in our home life that we do is let's toss every idea out and then prioritize. You know what's what's the key ones or what is it? You know I make my list, my husband makes his list, and we find out what's common on both our lists, and then we go forth from that. So um, I think that's a great topic. We can make the world better. We can make our church better. I think it's great that our church is doing these um, meetings that they're, you know, doing, trying to do some planning and, and looking at, you know, what direction the church is going to go. How are people going to participate? What what will get people excited? So um, anything, you know, like you said, in the boardroom, the classroom, around the family dinner table, um, any place that people are joined together when, Two or more joined together, Christ is there with them. The you know Holy Spirit is blessing them. So even with this panel here, the thoughts that we share can enlighten other people, and we can make other people's lives better by opening up what works for us and what's been good in our lives. So and having that positive feedback and that encouragement helps somebody to maybe get through their day to day. So thank you for bringing that, and I appreciate the time to share my thoughts. Well, we are well connected because I was sitting here thinking about the sanctuary of our church when you were telling that, explaining and talking about it. And I think about uh, our church family and how we all do things together, whether oh, I love our potlucks and our bingos sessions. And, and to me, it, it's uh, just so fulfilling that it's not, it turns work into pleasure. And uh, uh, all, of, all of the events, even uh, the book, the, the book clubs, every, everything within the church, it is, is just, it's just so uh, unifying and there isn't a competition. And that's what's so delightful. I think it's it's just bringing our ideas together and uh, sharing a Sunday afternoon or or a Wednesday evening. Um, thank you so much. Uh, did you have any more thoughts or? Uh, okay, I'd like to take this opportunity then 
uh, to thank everybody for joining us on YouTube today and um, to let you know that we welcome your comments, and your thumbs up, and uh, you're welcome to call the office if you would like to ever join us in these discussions or if you have topics that you'd like for us to talk about, please do so. Uh, everybody is welcome. And um, I'd like to thank the panel and everybody in the audience. And if you're ready, I'd like to close this out in prayer. Uh, dear Father, we take a deep breath with you and we thank you for the lessons, the thoughts, you've shared with us today in the moments of joy it brings into our lives and the direction, the course it gives us for later on today and for tomorrow. Thank you for these blessings. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, Search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.